Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Urverk UR103T Tarantula. This 18 karat white gold limited edition of 60 pieces can be seen and purchased on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and of course complete pricing details for this Urverk UR103T. Now, it's important to note that in terms of conventional dimensions, this watch can't be compared to a round timepiece. It can't even be combined, really, to something like a Cartier tank or a Reverso. It wears uniquely. Therefore, I'll describe its bare dimensions. My wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference, oval in profile, more flattish than round across the top. Now, the watch is heavy and broad. It's 36.5 millimeters across what would conventionally be the 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock measurement lengthwise with my arm. That's the width of it. It's not terribly thick, 14.5 millimeters describes the height, but you'll note the considerable tumble home from the top of the sapphire to the flank of the case. It's almost like a space capsule of some type, but because of that slope, it's easy to get a dress cuff or a tight sleeve to ramp up and over this case. It's not as much of an encumbrance as it may seem at first glance. Extremity to extremity is the only way to describe the fit of this watch, because you'll note lug to lug simply doesn't fit. The lug is underslung beneath the extremity of the case, so it's actually broader at its edge than the actual measurement between the spring bars of the strap, and I will note that the strap is fixed with screws, not springs, so it's far more secure. That's what you want on a large, heavy, expensive watch like this, 50 millimeters from extremity to extremity across the wrist, but very secure and planted. And it's planted in large part because Urverk, like a number of other smaller manufacturers, Roger Dubuis comes to mind, acknowledges that with a broad case, you need a broad strap, and this one nicely seats across the wrist, preventing torquing from side to side. You'll also note it's paired with a titanium and blackened Urverk inscribed pin buckle for easy on-the-fly adjustability. While the water resistance of this timepiece is scant, it is a sports watch in character. On the underside of the alligator leather, a very supple calfskin in matching black. Now, one of the standout features of this watch is just how much pertinent information is contained on the case back. The caliber in-house 3.03 is a 3 hertz or 21,600 vibration per hour manually wound movement, and all it features on the dial is hours and minutes. So to make it easier to read this watch, Urverk gives you a power reserve scale for the 43-hour power reserve, as well as a dial that reads from 0 to 15 minutes alongside constant seconds. Again, these make precise time reading easier, but you will have to take the watch off your wrist. Now, another unique feature and this is something really only shared with Hublot with its time control watches, is that there is a fine adjustment mechanism built into the case back whereby with a jeweler's tool, such as a fine screwdriver, the owner himself can read the rate of the watch with a home application like Kello, or if you own a chronoscope, one of those, and then you can adjust the watch to speed it up or slow it down incrementally. Again, that's a tremendous amount of trust demonstrated by Felix Baumgartner and Martin Fry, the principals respectively in watch watchmaking and design at Urverk. Now, of course, the UR103 debuted in 2003, and it was a bit of a breakthrough watch for Urverk. The first two watches, the UR101 and 102, were well-received starting in 1997, but they were also conservative, though they had an unconventional display of time based on the wandering hours clocks of the late Renaissance. You couldn't see much of the mechanism at first. It was 2005's UR103.3 that began to peel back the cover over the remote remarkable mechanism and make that the centerpiece of the watch's aesthetic. Now, in 2010, the UR103 Tarantula peeled back all of the encumbering case to fully reveal the mechanism. So it's really difficult to distinguish between the look of the watch and the look of the caliber UR103.03. What you're looking at is an architecture made of titanium on top of base plates and bridges made of a substance called RCAP40, which is corrosion resistant and anti-magnetic. The way you read the watch is you look at the disc and then next to the disc you line up the minute. So you'll see as the orbital system, the carousel, the tarantula, so to speak, revolves, the outgoing hour passes on the left, 
and on stage right, the incoming hour rotates into place. Now, a Maltese cross system is used in contrast to the index wheels and springs that Audemars Piguet used when it first attempted this time display system in the early 1990s. The Erfurt system of Maltese crosses is better suited to a wristwatch than AP's old system, which was perhaps better suited to pocket watch applications. This is more robust and befits a watch designed for everyday use. You'll notice how the Maltese cross ensures the rotating of the outgoing hour Hour, as well as the rotating into position of the incoming hour. And it's simply a digital display that's read in a linear fashion. And again, the movement really is central to the aesthetic of the watch. But the white gold case is beautifully finished, all of high polish on both its flanks and its tops. It has a little bit of a step to break up the shear of the case, as well as a striation that blends into the knurled finish of the crown at the head of the watch. Very high tech, and yet Built by hand, Erwerk has never built more than 450 pieces per year, and according to Felix Baumgartner, it never will. You can see and you can purchase this unique combination of traditional watchmaking and modern portrayal on our website.